Welcome, welcome everyone to the session Hybrid Mobile App Testing Tips, Tips for Success by Diago Molina. Diago is the one who leads the Selenium projects and you know he leads the initiatives, open source initiatives at the Sauce Lab as well. We are glad, Diago, that you can join us today. Without any further delay, Diago, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Diego. Uh, I'm going to talk about hybrid mobile apps. Um, most uh, specifically, uh, more specifically about um, web views. And I'm Diego. I'm part of the Selenium team. I'm also part of the open source program office at Source Labs. And if you want to uh, reach out to me after the, the conference is sober, uh, that's my my LinkedIn. Um, so I'm going to talk about hybrid apps. I'm going to talk about the challenges when you want to automate them, uh, how to uh, find those web views in a reliable way, and uh, how you can debug them. And uh, you will notice uh, in some places that while finding them and debugging them and automating them, there are some uh, possible pitfalls that you can fall into. And the idea is to reduce those um, possible failures, reduce uh, that flakiness, flakiness and uh, yeah, I'm just going to wrap up after that. Um, before moving forward, I just, just want to thank Wim Sellers. Uh, my interest for mobile has been growing lately. And one of the persons who helped me a lot to build this presentation, to actually add some content to it was Wim. Um, so this is uh, one of the people, uh, one of the persons I follow mostly in, in social media. So if you want to check for good mobile uh, content, also testing in general, follow him, uh, write to him, uh, connect with him. Um, very, very knowledgeable person about mobile testing. Moving forward, um, let's talk about apps uh, in general. So when you talk about uh, apps and uh, then going uh, more specifically about mobile apps, um, then you have the typical two types of apps, like you have a web app, and you have a native app, the native app usually is an app that has been coded specifically for an operating system, uh, Android or iOS. They use the specific tools that were created for that um, operating system or that ecosystem. So Java and Kotlin for Android and, and, and the tools and the programming languages for iOS. And they are able to use the hardware of the device uh, to a full extent. Um, so whatever it is, like the camera, they can take advantage of different uh, resources from the device. And uh, they're usually, as many regular applications, distributed through their app store. Um, and then when you talk about websites uh, or web applications, they are uh, developed with mostly standardized technologies. Um, you can run them in any platform because they're just running, um, there is a, like a server side and the client side is mostly a browser and they regularly use or need internet access to, to work, right? But the difference is that they have a limited access to the device. Um, which brings us to the point, what if I need, what if I have a, like a native app but I need to display some mobile content in that app. So that's where you find hybrid apps, right? Um, and it basically looks like a native app that at some point has a mobile web view uh, in it. And the idea is that you can display internal content and you can embed it in the app, the HTML page, or you can actually fetch from the internet the content you want to display. And this is very helpful um, for mobile apps because in many cases you have something like documentation for some reason. You, you have like the FAQs from an app that you just don't want to translate the whole content into native elements in the application for several reasons, because you're duplicating content. Uh, what if you have to update that content? What if you have to... Um, but if you have like to update uh, the application, the, the, the web application, there is a bug, then you don't need to release the mobile application again. So there are different use cases that make web views very suitable for development and uh, as we're gonna see uh, later for automation as well. The most uh, popular 
framework used for for um, hybrid applications is Ionic, and uh, it, because it's just like purely actually taking the the web content and and putting it into um, the mobile application. Um, some conversation also with with Wim because like this topic was like was like fairly new the the, the details of it. Um, I was asking, but what about Flutter? What about like React Native? And he took the 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 time to explain to me and like to give me some content where I could read and say, okay, like Flutter is actually a, a framework that is close cross platform, but it's not entirely hybrid because it doesn't rely entirely on the on the technologies that are used for 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 web. So it's like translating a lot of elements between the um, the language is being written into them native um elements that you use for the for the application in each on each uh, platform um and then when you talk about the web views um then you have differences that are subtle but um important at the time of automation because in android obviously each one of them have a different system for for web views uh but they work similarly uh each one of them uses a different browser um so it doesn't really matter, for example, if you're using an iPhone and you use, for example, Firefox under the hood that is a party in the end. If you open Chrome in 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 an iPhone under the hood, it's using the the the, the same um, system Safari uses. So it's it's a very interesting way that you have to take into account when you're automating uh, web use. Um, for example, in Android, you can update the 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 web view um, so the the core things that are used to to um, to display the web view, like for example, Chrome, gets independent updates in your i in your Android uh, mobile device, um, but on iPhone, like Safari is updated every time the operating system is updated. So it's a bit different, and that's a very important fact to take into account when automating web views because. A web view might have been implemented with a given version of the Chrome engine, and then you have to match that with Chrome driver as well. Um, and if the browser that you are using in the mobile device has a different version from the one you are uh, from the Chrome driver version you are using to automate it, then there might be a mismatch. There might be a, a, an issue with automation. So those are sort of differences you have to take into account when um, you're facing web views and you want to automate them, right? Um, one of the advantages uh, about automating these type of things, these uh, web views, is that um, basically you can have access to this, all the elements you have access when you're automating a website, right? Um, you can have access to the application storage, you can play with the DOM, you can access the elements, um, and then you have uh, the same selectors for both operating systems, which is it's an advantage. Uh, it's like automating a website, right? But um, in the end, what you're having is the steps previous to that, they're a bit different and they're a bit trickier depending on the approach you're taking, um, which takes me to the part that I want to talk more about, which is like, how do you find web use, right? Um, before that, before uh, thinking about automating web views, um, you have to either if you are like both developer and tester, or you have to be in touch with the with the development team. You need to build this application with uh, as a debug build, right? And you have to enable when that build process is happening. You have to enable that the remote debugging for the web view is enabled as well. Um, this presentation will be shared later, later, and then you can check the links that tell you how to do this for both platforms as well. Um, so when you want to find and debug all these different uh, web views, I mean, there are local tools that you can use. You can have like the, the Android Studio, you can have XUI test to launch things, the Chrome browser, the Safari browser. Uh, for simplicity, I just use the UI at Source Labs, where you can just use install the application and use the same tools you would use locally. I'm gonna share, there's a link below this uh, video that you can use that um, to do that locally. But in short, we're gonna use the source demo application 
where uh, I'm going to go to a website, I'm going to load a web view, and these same things, you can do them locally when with your local tools. And in this case, you can use the dev tools uh, from the browser to interact with the web view and find the elements. You can debug it. You can uh, identify the locator you need to use to actually um, do the automation properly. And this is just an example how you could modify and play with the DOM. So this was an Android application that you use the Chrome DevTools to play with that. A similar experience you find with iOS. Um, in this case, you would need, if you're doing that locally, you would need to enable the developer options in Safari. And you would see uh, in a similar way that you can have access to the DevTools to interact with the different elements that you find in the web view. Um, in this case, uh, I'm just doing the same thing I did with the Android application. I'm going to load the website and I'm going to see through the dev tools we have enabled here um, in our application that we can do the same thing I did with the Android application. Play with the DOM, uh, modify it, and uh, debug it if it's needed, find the elements I need to find, and so on. One extra tool that we have to find web views and debug them is the Appium Inspector. Again, for simplicity, I used the embedded Appium Inspector we have in the, in the UI at Source Labs, and basically it helps you to identify web views and how to interact with them, and also it helps you to find ways to debug them. Which brings me to the part that, um, what about automating all this, right? Because I was just doing like some manual interactions, some, some um, live testing as we call it at source. Um, but Appium offers you different options that you can um, go through to get the different information that you need to automate the web view. Um, so the documentation talks about uh, the context that you can get in Appium. So you can get all the contexts that are available and the contexts are where you can find the web views that you want to automate. So you can get the current one or you can switch to a context and all that. Um, so how does this look when you work with a um, with an Android and iOS application? So you can have something like the driver, you can ask the driver to get you the context handles. This is Java in this case. Um, and if you print them out, in the case of Android, you would see something like this, right? You would see that there is a context that is a native app. Uh, so the native part of the application that is actually using the uh, native elements of the operating system. And you would see another um, entry that is the actual web view that contains all the different things that are being rendered via the embedded Chrome browser in this case. Um, one of the things that you have to do always is that you are seeing that the web is being loaded, right? But if you use driver dot get context handles, at the beginning you will see just one single um, uh, context, and that happens because you can see the the the, the contexts. Uh, only when they have com completely loaded. So when the website has actually loaded completely, that's when you will see the extra context. So sometimes you have to do like a while the amount of number of con the amount of number of context handles is bigger than one, then you actually can continue or something like that. Um, for iOS is the same thing. Uh, you would see something like the native app, and then you would see an ID of the web view. So that's the difference between Android and iOS. Um, so if you want to get the current context or you want to switch to the current context, these are the steps you, you would follow. So far, we have gone through the steps that you uh, regularly go through, identify the web views, uh, you know, use the debugging applications to understand which uh, web views are available. Maybe you have already spoken to the development team to ask them to enable this for, for, for automation. Um, you have found the documentation in Appium, you have written some code, and, and then this is the point where you're starting to face some um, challenges. Because, for example, you might have an application that has more than, web, than, than one web view, right? And what happens there? When you query in Android, 
give me the web views, you're still gonna get something like this is a native app, and you're gonna get the name uh, of the package of the application. But the thing is that there could be more than one tab in that web view. So the question here is, which one is the one I need to automate? Because if you just switch to that context, you're gonna get uh, a tab from that web view that you can start automating, and maybe one time it works, but then the next time you run the test, it might not work because the order of the of the of the tabs is not guaranteed always. Then that's when you're gonna start having some flaky tests because you're probably trying to automate the tab inside the web view that is not the one you want to automate. Um, for iOS, probably you could get more than one web view, and the problem is that here, since you're having just the ID of the web view, then you don't know, okay, so which one is the one I need to switch to, to actually automate it. Um, one approach would be just like starting to switch to each web view and then query the title or query the page URL so we can actually filter from that information and understand which one is the one we need to interact with. The problem here is that that takes time, you know, switching, getting the one you need, and so on, it takes time, and this brings you to uh, a flaky and, and a slow approach. Um, thankfully, the Appium team has invested time in this problem, and there is something called mobile get contexts. And you can do this by executing a script, so basically sending um, the Appium server a command to get you more information about the web views that are, or the contexts that are available in the mobile application. In this case, uh, if you do this in iOS, you would get this array of replies, of replies that has uh, different entries, like one for the native app and one or more for the available um, web views that you have in that application. So this is pretty neat because in this case, you have four entries for the web views uh, in this case that declare what is the ID, what is the title of the page, what is the URL, and uh, something that is like a unique, unique identifier, like what's the, the bundle ID. Uh, and this is very helpful because if you read this, uh, uh, like as a human, you, you would understand, okay, this is actually the one I need to automate. Um, so you can go at the first uh, attempt, you can get the view that you actually want to automate. When you do this with, with Android, um, you get much more information, which is nice, but then you also need to filter this information in some way. You would get information about the web view, the process, the URL you can use actually to connect via web sockets. Um, so there is a bunch of information that is useful, but it's not the information we need to get right away to, to filter the, the, the web view. Um, so what we want to do here right now is that we want to find a way to get access to the web view in a cross-platform way. Because normally when we want to automate a web view, we don't want to write code for iOS. We don't want to write code for Android, right? We want to use the same code because in theory, the web view will look the same uh, on both platforms. So what we need to do or what we want to do is to actually find a reliable way to get that web view for both platforms. Um, so now I'm gonna just do some pseudo coding, but also get some code from WebLaw.io with where this is already implemented. And and the idea is that we can build a a, a, a structure, a, a type structure that can describe the web view we want to automate. So we can build something like this where we have different uh, attributes that will help us to identify the web view in a more simple way. So we can have the ID, we have the title of the web uh, view or the tab that we want to automate, uh, the URL and so on. And these are attributes that will help us easily to filter the web view we want to automate. Uh, we will end up building something like a helper function to do that. And in theory, we have to filter if we're automating iOS or Android. Um, as we saw a couple slides before, 
if we're automating iOS, the information we get from from um, from Appium uh, about the web use, about the context, is just enough to filter. But if we're doing Android, you saw that quite big uh, JSON payload that we need to filter. Um, but the good thing is that since we have more information, we can filter more attributes. So how would we do that? How would we go through this um, um, large amount of information that the Android um, context is, is giving us uh, back? So let's let's have a, um, a closer look into that. So for iOS, we would simply grab those four elements, those four um, attributes, and then we just use them to filter the, the web view. But Android, we need to start checking all the different attributes that you find in this JSON uh, payload. For example, uh, we can find easily the four key ones, the four or five key ones that we can use to actually um, filter and identify the tab we want to use. Um, in this example, it's very summarized, but if you query applications that have maybe a, a service worker or something like that, you will get extra information that will help you understand more the application, but then it's information you need to use to filter and get the web you, you want to automate. In this case, you can get the Android package, you can get the ID, the title, and the URL, and you can also combine that with the web view name if you want to um, have a better way of filtering. So if you think about it, we already have common elements between the two um, web view systems, so iOS and Android. If we think more about what we're checking here, um, we have an ID here that is the window handle, so the tab that lives inside the web view for Android. And also we have uh, the page. So if like, I'm sorry, just went one forward. Um, so let me go back. So below the ID, you also have the attribute called page, uh, sorry, type. And over there, if for example, you have a, a service worker, then you will see something that says service worker. But what we care about is uh, about the ones that says page, because actually that's a page we can automate. Um, and then there is more information about this uh, specific uh, page that we can use to um, filter, right? We can have something that tells us that uh, if the web view is actually active, well, likely active, because we can always uh, filter that. Um, we can always understand if there is content there or um, if this has, has actually been shown or attached to the web view at some point and if it's visible or not to the user. So going back to our uh, code that we're trying to design, um, then we think about okay, for Android, I have a bunch of information that I need to start filtering. So. To filter that, I need to know the package name of the application I want to test. And that information, I should know it because I have been in touch with the development team, or I am also like maybe the developer and the tester at the same time. And with that information, we can start parsing the data uh, for the for the Android uh, web views. So how does that look? How would be actually parsing that data to understand what is the web view we want to automate. Um, so we will need to have like an extra method that basically gets that information for us. Um, the first key thing is that we need to remember that after automating the web view, at some point we want to go back to the native view uh, to keep interacting with applications. So if you saw the, if you paid uh, a, a bit of more attention to the JSON payload, it had information about the web views, but it didn't have the native app context, which was actually contained in the iOS payload. Uh, so we would need to add that to, to, to the answer. And then um, we need to start finding the web view, right? And we have the package name of the application. So we search and filter for that. And then if we don't find it, well, maybe the application has not loaded the web view. So maybe what we have, we, what we have to do is to loop on that and, and, and check if there is something there. If we find the package, then we have to find the active pages. So the active tabs that might live inside that web view. And that's the way you can filter it by page. 
and then you have to understand that the description is not empty because if both are true, then this is what we want to. This is what we have to check if the page is attached and is visible to the user. So we have a very good candidate um, to return and then we can use for automation. Um, and then we just say with a shape and we just massage that information to make it fit into our format that we have that is um, close cross platform. So we return that result and we move over. So now we have the information about Android and now we can check with that information, with that information that, that has been formatted in this cross platform uh, format, we can check, okay, so which one is the web view that we want to test, right? So if these conditions are, are present, then what happens? So uh, we need to start filtering by the elements we want to um, verify and check. And then basically um, what happens is that if we have the elements we want to filter, like the like the URL name, like the like the title of the application of the web view, uh, but sometimes we just don't find them in the information that was returned, right? And this circles back to one of the comments I made a few minutes ago, and is that when you want to automate a web view, there are situations that you don't get that information back from, from Appium because the web view has not loaded completely. So what happens is that you just need to wait a bit, right? You have to loop. And the advice I was I was uh, taking from women is that you can wait up to 15 seconds because you know it depends on the mobile device you're using for the automation. Maybe the network conditions are not the best ones. Maybe you're trying to simulate how um, the application behaves if, if you like change the, net, the network conditions, like if you throttle the network, for example. So you can say, okay, maybe 15 seconds is a good time to wait. And you can query every 100 or 200 milliseconds to see if the information about the web view you're trying to automate is there or not. Um, having done that, then you know that, okay, the web view is there, is loaded, and you can put that in the information that you want to use as a filter. Then you just return that. And what happens is that at some point, after doing all this information you're trying to retrieve, um, you're going to get a set of cross-platform um, information that is going to give you, OK, these are the web views that are present. So your code has to focus only on the elements that are present to um, filter what web view you want to find. So what we're going to get in the end is that this is what we want, right? You want to switch to a context and you don't want to search and you don't want to iterate over and over, over the different web views. So if you want to switch to the context of the native app, then you just do this. And, and if you want to find a specific web view, then you can say, please find this context where the title of the web view is Swag Labs in this example, or you can say this is the URL, or you can say, please find me the context where uh, you find this title and this URL. And this is a much better approach because you know you don't need to care about the 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 ID of the web view. You don't need to care about the different um, elements that are present there. But with these helper methods, you just tell this code find me this with this URL and this title, and it will go through all the information that is present from the web view. So this code would look something like this. If you want to switch to the content, that, to the context that is a native app, you just do that with the, with the uh, native code that uh, Appium offers you, like switch context. And um, then if it's not the native app, then you have to start doing some checks, right? Um, you have to check it for the title, for the URL. If they're provided, you can use that to filter. Um, you can filter the multiple web views based on that. And then you can get the context from the helper method that we built a moment ago. With that, you can find the correct uh, or the correct web view you want to automate by 
um, starting the different checks. So with iOS is much easier because you can use, maybe you have like the title, the URL, and maybe you actually know the bundle ID. So that's an easy way to filter it. But if you have Android, it gets a bit more tricky, but the meaning of that is that you have more information to have uh, to find a reliable web view uh, or a tab inside the web view that you want to automate. Um, so first of all, you have to switch to the web view, to the package name, so you are actually inside there. And then you find the matching web view uh, based on the criteria you're passing to the method, either the URL uh, or the or the title or both. And well, obviously, if you don't find that, then you throw back an error. But then you switch to the content, and this is the interesting part. How do you switch to the content? You, uh, if you're on iOS, we have seen that you just use the native uh, uh, method of switch content. But if you are inside the, the the Android web view, then you just want to switch to the specific tab you want to automate. And for that, you would use the the, the switch to window method that is native uh, from the that comes all the way down from from, from Selenium. Um, and then you just find the correct, uh, you know, part that you wanted to to automate. So, in the end, uh, this is what we would end up doing because we are gonna find the matching context based on the criteria we are passing. So we have the identifier, we have the title, we have the URL, and um, in short, what we're gonna have here is that based on the criteria we have, you know, through all that information, we didn't have to go to every single web view, query the information to understand what web view we had to uh, automate, but we just know the application, we know the title, we know the URL, we know the different attributes from that uh, piece of uh, code, and then we just use it, you know, to retrieve the correct thing that we want to um, automate. Um, so to wrap up, this is gonna give us a bunch of information that is useful to filter uh, the right web view. I feel I'm repeating myself over and over. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, but yeah, the goal we had is to find a better way to interact with web views. And most of the time, this is about finding the correct web view that we want to automate. So we would end up with a few public methods that uh, are going to get us the current context and are going to help us to switch to the context we want to automate. And this is based on the, a couple of private methods that are basically parsing the information Android is giving us back and uh, how we're actually finding the context we want to uh, get into to automate. Um, as a as a as as like in the upper layer, we where we would write the automation code, we're gonna get something like like this. What we see on the on the right side, we we're gonna see a method that is very simple to use, that you can pass arguments that are um, knowledgeable to you as a tester or as a developer, that you can know exactly what the title is, what the URL is, and with that you can find the right and the correct web view to automate. Um, to wrap up, um, the learnings I got from all this process and from the uh, previous experiences uh, I've been uh, having when I try to automate a few things in, in, in web views specifically is that um, it's great to have web views in native applications uh, because, you know, they offer you a balance of effort when you are developing an application. You can like do deduplicate content. You can like actually have shortcuts um, to different uh, options that you have in your general application, like the web and the and the mobile combined. But it's critical to test them, right? Because um, they have unique challenges uh, regarding you know specific platform performance and consistency above uh, across them um, and the idea is that you need to uh, find a way to um, find those um, web views in a reliable way so it's like it can be tricky to to test web views um, and also slow uh, because it's it's taking some time 
to actually load the web view. So you need to find uh, ways to wait for the web view to be loaded. But uh, obviously, one of the important things is that you need to understand uh, mostly your application. That's one of the key things, right? Um, the most important thing I, I have learned through all this process on the understanding web views and how to automate them is that you need just to talk to the development team. You need to understand what are the elements you need to wait for to understand that the web view has been loaded. Um, you need to actually talk to them to understand what are the names of the of the uh, of the different elements you can use to filter the web views, and and more than that, um, it's it's like you need to invest time in understanding your application, and you need to invest time collaborating across different teams to see what makes sense to automate in that web view or not, or, or like what elements you can actually use to find reliably and in a, a non-flaky way what web view you want to automate. Um, with that, yeah, I just want to thank you for being here. Uh, this has been my talk. Uh, I hope you get something interesting from it. Please reach out to me in, in LinkedIn, uh, also to Wim. We're happy to have a conversation with you uh, about this topic and, and other more. And yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for spending uh, 30 minutes of your time with me, 35 minutes actually. And uh, if you have any questions, I will do my best to um, give you good answers or give you pointers of where you can find those answers for your use case. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Diago, for sharing your experience and expertise with us. So there is one question in the Q&A section. So it is from Grish Kumar. He is saying that we have a mobile app, Android iOS, which are developed in Ionic framework. I'm facing while automation via APM. Side menu options are not inspectable and appear as images. Text Android widget text view locator is not unique. Cross app buttons class android widget image which is not having an id attributes in cross the apps i don't have i'm not able to find the unique locator and we don't have ids so the main problem is i'm not able to view it in web view so this is the question that girish kumar has put in the q a um my first uh so thank you for the question it's a pretty good question uh and and, and i see that uh, often, uh, sometimes in the in the apping forums, or um, yeah, customers at Soslab who reply uh, very similar, who give us very similar questions, and I'm not saying this is the case, but very often it happens that there was no communication between the person who is testing and the person who is developing, because um, as an example. In the demo app, we have uh, for all these things at, at source, um, we just make sure that there are specific um, IDs or accessibility IDs in the different elements so you can actually locate things in a simple way. And um, it sounds like that might be the problem in this case that you have an application where the developer has not put um, these elements so you can identify them like the ID or the accessibility ID. So my, my, my guess would be like chat to the developers, talk to them and, and explain your problems because you want to automate. Uh, because like in the application I was showing a moment ago, um, the, the those side menu options we have in the demo app, each one of them has an ID and you can automate them like that. We have example codes that, that you can rely on, but they wouldn't work if the application didn't have those attributes. So I recommend you to talk to the developers, uh, uh, or if you're the developer, to add that. Uh, but if I didn't answer your question completely, feel free to, you know, reach out to me in LinkedIn, and then we'll find a, a, an answer for you. Uh, thank you, Diego. So there's one more question from Jessie Evangelista. Uh, she's saying, I'm from Philippines. May I ask if this app is able to test the POS terminals with a physical card? Um, great and confusing question. Yeah, because um, there is a bit of a mix here because if you want to test real hardware, um, 
there are other uh, types of tools that you can have around. What I have seen, uh, just because I remember that I was in a conference where they were testing um, um, uh, a post um, terminal, so like a payment, um, uh, I think to 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 pay things like in a in a, in a restaurant or in a, or in a grocery store. Uh, they were just like mocking the different hardware parts and there was a separate team who was taking care of like manually testing the hardware in different use cases but to actually test the software they were just mocking the different um hardware parts so i would say um i don't see how this can help you i don't see how web views can help you how identifying web views can help you to test this so I would do a, a wider research on, on how are people approaching this problem to, to test um, POS terminals uh, with a physical card. Um, what I saw in a presentation is that people mock the external and the hardware dependencies uh, to, to test the software and then someone else tests the hardware. Um, but yeah, uh, what I have shared here in this talk, I don't think it helps you um, to do that. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so there are no more questions. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Diago will be available in the Hangout section as well. You can go there. Table name will be Diago. You can join it there and you can have a chat with Diago personally. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Diago. Thanks for this, you know, very enlightening talk. Thank you a lot. Thank you, Samishka. Thank you very much. Thank you.